What's up everyone, today in this video I am going to do an in-depth review of the Dell G15 that comes with Core i5-13450HX and RTX 3050 and find out whether you should invest your money in this laptop or not. Just to test it out, I've used it as my main laptop for video editing and gaming. So I will also be sharing my own experiences and thoughts on this device. Let's talk about the specifications first. The Core i5-13450HX, a 10-core CPU with 6 performance cores and 4 efficiency core for a total of 16 threads is included with it, following an NVIDIA RTX 3050 graphic card with 6GB VRAM and 95W of TGP. Now next up is a 8GB single-channel DDR5 RAM with a frequency of 4800MHz that can be upgraded to 32GB in total, a 15.6-inch Full HD 120Hz WVA panel. Storage is next in the line. You receive a 512 gigs of M.2 NVMe Zen 4 SSD that can be upgraded up to 1 terabyte, and there is also an additional slot that can accommodate an additional 1 terabyte SSD. The thing you should keep in mind is the SSD you get inside is a smaller 2240 type, not your regular 2280 type SSD. Additionally, you get Bluetooth 5.2 and Wi-Fi 6 with 160 MHz channel range for connectivity. Dell hasn't given the design much thought this time around. So it's same as it was last year. In addition to this, the majority of cooling components have been placed toward the back, which improves finger comfort. Additionally, the RNG logo on the side is visible and has a decent appearance. To start, let's talk about the materials that went into making the laptop. As is typical, plastic was used to make the entire body. Having said that, the base is quite sturdy but the lid flexes slightly and makes a strange noise when you twist it. One of the primary reasons for the body's strength is the amount of reinforcement done on the inside. But this internal strength comes with a major disadvantage, which is none other than the weight of the device. At the first glance, I had hoped that this laptop might be as heavy as 2.2 or 2.3 kilos. But as soon as I lifted the laptop with my arms, I just felt the real weight a whooping 2.65 kilos with a profile of 26.9 mm thick. And with the mighty 240W adapter included, the total weight reaches an approximate of 3.7 kilos. The device's weight distribution is done excellent, allowing for easy lid opening with one hand up to 130 degree. The hinge design is sturdy and does not creak, and there are no issues with the opening and closing mechanism. And on the top of the lid, you will find an HD webcam. Here is the quality of the webcam. Now I'm recording my video on the webcam of this laptop. And as you can see here, the video quality of this webcam. There are a lot of grains here and there. Well, you can use it for your online classes or your Zoom meetings. But if you want a better webcam quality footage, then you can invest in an external webcam because this is not that much good. Now the voice you are hearing right now is being recorded from the microphone of this laptop. I don't know what I might be sounding right now, but you can let me know in the comment section what you think about the microphone quality of this laptop. Moving down to the keyboard area of the design, the first thing you will notice is a big intake ventilation grille. Below that, there is a really ordinary style keyboard with numpad and orange backlight. Talking about my experience, I am not satisfied with the typing at all. It is not comfortable either for gaming or purely typing. Two of the major issues with the keyboard are the size of the arrow keys, which felt a lot cramped into the laptop. Two of the major issues with the keyboard are the size of the arrow keys which fell a lot cramped into the laptop. You can mistakenly click on the two arrow keys at once. Second is the key travel, which feels just boring. Now the same story goes with the touchpad. Though it's pretty responsive, the clicks feel a bit unstable with uneven clicking areas. I'm not sure if this is the issue with my model specifically. However, there is also an audible click sound whenever I simply swipe the fingers. Now for the cooling system. If you turn the laptop upside down, you will see the two speaker cutouts as well as the two more ventilation grills. The hot air is exhausted through two vents on the back and one on each side of the laptop. On the inside, you get the cooling system, which comprises two heat pipes shared between the CPU and the GPU and one more for each of them, which receives its own heat sink. In addition, there are a couple of heat spreaders meant for the graphic memory and the VRMs. For the ports, on the left hand side, there is a LAN port and an audio jack. Then on the right, you get two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports. Finally, at the back, you will find a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port with DisplayPort output and another USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port an HDMI 2.1 connector and a power plug. And if you get the laptop which is equipped with the RTX 3060 version, it will have a Thunderbolt 4 connector in place of the USB Type-C port. Now shifting our gears toward the display, Dell offers a 15.6 inch 16x9 
फुल एस डी डब्ल्यू वी ए मैट स्क्रीन ऑन द जी फिफ्टीन सीरीज द डब्ल्यू वी ए और वाइड विंग एंगल्स हैज लोअर वाइड एंगल व्यूज एज कम्पेयर टू द आई पी एस वन बट प्रोवाइड्स बेटर रेस्पॉन्स टाइम बट दिस इज नॉट द केस विद द लैपटॉप इवन विद डब्ल्यू वी ए पैनल द रेस्पॉन्स टाइम इज रियली स्लो इट्स एट अबाउट ट्वेंटी वन मिली सेकेंड्स फॉर द कलर कवरेज स्पेस द डिस्प्ले हैज फोर्टी थ्री परसेंट ऑफ एडोबी आर जी बी सिक्सटी टू पॉइंट टू परसेंट ऑफ एस आर जी बी फोर्टी वन पॉइंट सिक्स परसेंट ऑफ डी सी आई पी थ्री एंड फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ एन टी एस सी सो यू विल हैव प्रॉब्लम डूइंग इवन बेसिक कलर ग्रेडिंग लाइक सेचुरेशन एंड टिंट एडजस्टमेंट एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू डू एडवांस कलर ग्रेडिंग लाइक यूजिंग द ल्यूमेट्रिक स्कोप देन आई वुड एडवाइज यू टू गो विद द कलर एक्यूरेट मॉनिटर और जस्ट बाई अ बेटर लैपटॉप द कॉन्ट्रास्ट रिसी ऑफ ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड बाई वन इज ऑल्सो नॉट गोइंग टू बी एनी हेल्प आई In your color grading work, you will have a lot of problems adjusting the contrast, shadow, white, and black. The display is better suited for gaming and media consumption. Now, the peak brightness level of the display is about 288 nits, which means the outdoor visibility of the display is almost zero. Now, talking about the Core i5 13450HX, 13450HX is a fast mid-range mobile processor from the Raptor Lake series. It was announced in early 2023. The CPU includes Six performance cores with hyperthreading and four FCN cores without hyperthreading. The P cores have a clock speed ranging from 2.4 GHz to 4.6 GHz. Smaller E cores have clock speed ranging from 1.8 to 3.4 GHz. All cores have access to combined 20 MB L3 cache compared to the 36 MB on i9 models. Raptor Lake outperforms Elder Lake in terms of P cores, cache, and E cores. Furthermore, the chip supports faster DDR5 memory. Up to 56 megahertz on the i9 3980HX, but only 4800 megahertz for the i5. If we talk about the performance of the i5 13450HX, then it performs remarkably well in the Cinebench R23. It has fantastic single and multi-thread performance, beating even the M2 Max SoC. It's more than capable of handling even the most demanding professional rendering tasks. If you want better performance still, you can upgrade to the i7 13700HX variant. The 13450HX has an excellent overall Geekbench 6 score. It has excellent single core and multi-thread performance, allowing it to handle a wide range of workloads, including demanding tasks such as video editing and 3D animation. The Core i7-13700HX is faster overall, but primarily in multi-threaded workloads due to its two additional performance cores. The performance in Blender is outstanding. Although the Intel Core i5-13450HX can render the 3D scenes quickly, it's always better to use the dedicated NVIDIA RTX GPU because it supports NVIDIA Optix API hardware acceleration. PC Mark 10 is up next, which tests the basic app opening and closing performance. And here the 13450HX performs really good, so productivity apps will benefit from this score a lot. Now moving up to the GPU of this laptop. Now the GPU in this laptop is a RTX 3050 that comes in 6GB VRAM as compared to the 4GB on the older RTX 3050 and also based on the GA107 Ampere chip the 6GB variant offers more CUDA cores 2560 plus 25% but a cut down memory burst to 96 bit clock speed depends on the TGP variant and can range from 1530 to 1740 for the TGP variants of 35 to 95 watt the performance is between the old RTX 3050 and the RTX 3050 Ti and therefore best suited for full HD gaming in medium to high graphics settings the performance is not sufficient to enable ray tracing in most games but the tensor cores can be used for DLSS in some games and gets performance boost with slightly quality reduction Be aware that the low TGP variant will offer a significantly lower performance. The RTX 3050, however, maybe won't use all the ALUs on the chip. The ray tracing and tensor cores on the chip were also improved according to Nvidia. The chip in the RTX 3050 is manufactured by the Samsung in 8 nanometer, which is not quite able to keep up with the 7 nanometer node at TSMC, which is used by AMD. Now, without any more talks, let's get into the gaming test, and here are the results.
Because of the graphic switching implementation, the G155530 consumes only 3 to 13 watt when idle, leaving out short term extreme cases above this level. The included 240 watt power adapter has to work much harder in third mode. A mid range gaming laptop with 103 to 204 wattage has a relatively high power consumption. Regarding the battery, there are advantages as well as disadvantages. It can run for a long time, more than 5 hours according to my testing, when the brightness is lowered and power efficiency is activated. However, the battery life quickly runs out when a game starts. I played Mortal Kombat 11 for a little over an hour and RDR2 for an hour. You should allow roughly 3.5 hours if you don't play games and you keep the brightness up. Once more, this is average for a budget gaming laptop. The Dell G15 has bottom firing speakers. that can get pretty loud without sacrificing sound quality at maximum volume. They place a heavy focus on the mids and low treble frequencies to produce clear vocals, but they lack bass and treble extensions and sound boxy and hollow. In short, they work well for the spoken content, but not for music or movies. These are the SSD's read and write speeds. To put this in comparison to those on top of the line, the Samsung Evos have a transfer speed of around 5100 to 7000 megabytes per second. So the SSD inside the Dell G15 is quite one of the fastest you can get on a sub 1 lakh INR or 1500 US dollar laptop. Heat development is also consistent with the competition. The GPU's maximum temperature of 72 degrees Celsius makes it unsuitable for lap gaming. The CPU can reach up to 87 degrees Celsius, which is well within the limits. 60 minute stress test with the firm Mark and Prime 95 tools didn't result in the CPU or GPU throttling. While the Core i5-13450HX P core got hot around 97 degrees Celsius and E cores at around 83 degrees Celsius. The GeForce RTX 3050 also settled at high, yet is still uncritical 71.3 degrees Celsius. The Dell G15's thermal and noise handling is satisfactory. In idle mode, the keyboard deck remains cool and the fans are barely audible. The keyboard deck heats up under load, however, the hot spots are near the top, away from where the most people rest their hand. If you don't mind a little more fan noise or want a quieter laptop, then you can adjust the thermal profile according to your usage. At the time of making this review, the laptop was selling for around 76,000 INR on Amazon.in or 1500 US dollars on Amazon.com. During sales, you can get this laptop as low as 64,000 rupees or 1000 US dollars. Overall, the Dell G15 5530 comes with a lot of improvements over its predecessor. There is no doubt about its performance thanks to the 6GB VRAM RTX 3050 and the HX series processor from Intel. Now there are only two areas where Dell can improve, the first is the battery and the second is the keyboard. Otherwise the laptop is excellent. Of course if you score a good deal on the Dell G15, you shouldn't avoid the opportunity just by this. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did creating it and if you have any questions regarding this laptop or any other laptop then you can comment down in the comment section down below. Or if you have any detailed questions regarding this laptop or you want any recommendations while buying any other laptop then you can join my telegram group. For more info check out the description of this video or you can check out the description of my channel. Now if you are new to the channel then do subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Till then stay awesome, keep spreading positive vibes, peace out.